While everybody else rushed to review the Saturn IV Ultra, we took a look at the Saturn IV. We were incredibly impressed by that printer's ability to simply load a file, put some resin in, and print. It doesn't get any easier than that. But you didn't think we were going to skip the Saturn IV Ultra, did you? I'm Ron Burke, Editor-in-Chief for GamingTrend.com. Let's unbox the Saturn IV Ultra and see what's inside. All right, I kind of skipped ahead and unboxed a few things. You've all seen a power supply come out of the box. There's a power supply. It is the same sort of brick system that we saw on the standard edition and pretty much every other printer that you use. Um, also in the box, gloves. These are useful. These are non-nitrile uh, gloves, so uh, you can use these. They also don't have any sort of powder on them. Useful. Um, I have been corrected by a few of you readers on these. I've been saying throw these away. Uh, people have been saying use these uh, inside of your metal uh, strainer. So, okay, sure, I could see using that to strain my, my resin using my metal filter. I just wouldn't use these on my own uh, without a metal strainer. Obviously trying to balance this to put this back in the bottle, that's a no-go. As I sit here and flip them around, that's exactly the reason. So put these inside uh, like a coffee filter inside your metal filter and they'll, they'll hold their shape and you can strain stuff back in here if you have a failure and you need to train the the uh, resin tray. Plastic scraper, I still don't see use for this. Uh, replace these with a silicone one. Uh, this is just too rough for the FEP. I just, I can't see using these. Nobody's corrected me on that so far. Um, same standard metal scraper, these are useful. The Ultra version is uh, wireless capable, so there's a little wireless antenna, we'll put that on in a minute. Uh, same no uh, no branding USB drive. I've been using that on well last couple of generations of printers and haven't had to replace it. Uh, these are still garbage. Well, I appreciate that Elgoo includes something replaces with a respirator. A respirator will cost you twenty bucks. My lungs are worth more than this, so um, look for a future video where we're going to talk about VOCs and we're going to talk about uh, how to filter them out and we're going to take a closer look at the uh, Elgoo. I think it's the, hmm, I don't remember the name of it, but their, uh, their air filter system. So we're gonna take a look at what the VOCs are in the space with nothing running, with a print running, with multiple prints running, uh, with the hood open, with the hood closed. So look for that coming very soon. Uh, but yeah, these, still garbage. There are a lot of slicers out there that you can use. Cura is one of them, Prusa is another one. Uh, really, they all have their strengths and weaknesses. It's nice that they include the pro version. I'm not sure how long this lasts. I don't know if this is like a permanent license or, oh, looks like it's a one year license. So your first year is on Elegoo. Thank you very much. That's very cool of them to include. Um, I also removed the screws off of this tray. I personally don't like these screws, but it's nice that they've included these. Uh, I like being able to unscrew these with my hands. I know for a fact uh, I have neuropathy in my hands, so I tend to drop things. It'd be very easy for me to drop this directly in there, scratch the FEP or puncture it, something awful. So these, I place those and they screw right in and I can very easily remove them. There's no chance of me also dropping this in there. So thank you very much for including those. There's also a number of screws here. If you do, or I should say when you do, have to get inside this printer, there's a handful of spare screws here just to make sure that were you to lose one, you've got spares. Also included with the Ultra version, I pointed out that there's a lot of opportunity to drip here, and that has been my case uh, using the standard version. I've definitely dripped on top of this part, but uh, I'm gonna affectionately call this a bib. They've included a bib that you can kind of hook in here. And with this on top, you have a drip tray that you can certainly have a few drops there, clean that out, and not have it all over your printer. Um, I do hope that they start selling these because this would be nice to have on the standard version. It's just a flexible piece of, of plastic, so we're not talking something special here. Um, or, community, would you like to come up with something we can print? Now would be the time. All right, 
The major difference is not here. So this is the same as it is on the standard, uh, the standard edition. So this is not the magic. The magic is actually inside here. And I'll get you a closer look at that in a minute. You can see that this part actually rocks back and forth. And the idea is instead of the plate coming down and then lifting up and causing that suction on top of the FEP, instead the plate will come down and stay put and that little rocking motion will pull the print away from the plate. So supposedly that's gonna allow this to print significantly faster than the standard edition and also with less errors because it's not pulling on the uh, FEP as, as hard and so you should have less layer separation and other things. Proofs in the pudding, we'll have to see when we actually try it out. As for the plate itself, it is exactly the same as the standard plate. Um, it's got that same, it's got that same grid pattern here that should help with adhesion. Um, there are magnetic plates now that you can get for this. I still recommend those. You scuff this up, you're gonna need a magnetic plate anyway. Why not start with that? Keep this nice and clean. Uh, one thing that I pointed out in my other review for the standard edition is that this part is empty. You do not want to submerge this. Uh, there are little plugs here that you can remove to try and drain it, but <laughs> this is empty. And if you get uh, resin or uh, if you get IPA in it, uh, you're going to have to end up draining that out. So uh, IPA is a nice of alcohol, not the uh, beer drink. So, uh, so you don't want to fully submerge this uh, when you're doing your print cures. Uh, are cleaning, so get the stuff off the plate or just set it inside there so it doesn't go any further than the plate. Uh, just word of caution, you don't want to fill this up with IPA. The Ultra version also comes with a thousand grams of standard photopolymer resin. Uh, this is just gray resin so you can get started. Uh, don't get too bogged down on the color of your resin. A lot of people get weirded out by like, I don't want to use this color, I want to use this color. But realistically, unless you're going to keep it that color of the resin, you're probably going to primer it. And then it's going to be whatever color you paint it. So don't get too hung up on this. Get more hung up on the type of resin and how it cures and how it uh, reacts after you're done printing, uh, wh whether it's harder or whether it's uh, a softer but more detail. So figure that part out. Don't, don't focus so much on the color. Obviously, clear resin is a whole different uh, thing, but this will work just fine. Uh, don't get too hung up on that and certainly don't overspend on it. Inside the chassis, we have the similar uh, layout as the non-Ultra version, uh, except you'll see that there is an AI camera here. Uh, this little cap comes off and uh, that's going to give you a nice um, slow-mo view of your print. So you'll see that uh, kind of time dilated. It probably takes a shot every five frames and that's going to give you that uh, that cool video that we're obviously going to show when we figure out what we're going to print here. Uh, the case itself is very similar to the standard edition. It's this gray color. Um, oh, okay. It doesn't want to close because this is closed. There we go. So that's very similar to the standard edition. Uh, there's really not a huge difference. This gray color, uh, I have found that the red color that they were using and the green color is actually better than this gray color for keeping light out. Uh, I actually had an issue where uh, I had my printers kind of idle for a while and I do have the, went, the blinds shut, but the ones with the gray covers, I suddenly had uh, weird shapes coming out of the, uh, the resin that was still inside. So it had partially cured something and it only happened on the gray ones. So maybe that's an issue. Maybe it's just my setup. I don't know. My anecdotal evidence, the red and the green seems to work really well. I'm not sold on this gray. So maybe somebody with more skill than I can test that out and figure out if that's the case. We do see some differences in the ventilation on the Saturn IV Ultra versus the Saturn III Ultra. On the back of the Saturn III Ultra, there was a small angled plate where there were some fans underneath and that would vent all the air out the back out of that small angled plate. On the Saturn IV, we have a side ventilation system as well as a small vent underneath, and then we have the port in the back. Now that port on the back is where you're gonna connect something like the Elegoo Mars Mate, which we're gonna cover in a different video. And uh, we've seen that plug pretty much since the Saturn II and the Mars II. So that should be pretty universally compatible, but we'll cover that in that other video.
Installation of the plate is incredibly simple. This dog bone shape right here simply slides onto that portion right there, clamp shut, and you're done. All the self-leveling function that was present on the Saturn IV Standard Edition is of course present on the Saturn IV Ultra. So there's nothing you need to do beyond what I just did. That's it. You're done. The rest is handled by the operating system, which I'll show you in the lab. Now the build volume is exactly the same. As I mentioned earlier, the only real difference is because of the way that the FEP disconnects from the thing that you're printing, that's going to change the build speed. And I'm going to go ahead and put that on the screen here so you can see the comparison between the standard version and the ultra version. You can see that it's quite a bit faster. Now we'll see if that affects print quality when we get it in the lab. So I'm going to put all this together and let's do exactly that. Off to the lab. We finished up all of our testing with the Saturn IV Ultra and wanted to cover a couple of pros and cons as well as touch on large figures like this Nova from StarCraft II as well as something that all of you have requested, a look at some smaller figures. The biggest pro for the printer is ease of use. I gave the printer resin, gave it five plates of things to print and the end result is this Nova. Now you're going to get a closer look at this. It is not ready for prime time. It's straight off the plate, cured and tacked together. I've not cleaned it up in any way. In fact, you're going to see that it's not even primered. You'll notice that there's even some blending of different resins in here. And the best part is the Saturn IV Ultra didn't care. I'm using two different resins from two different manufacturers and two different cure uh, wavelengths. And it just didn't matter. I couldn't get the thing to fail if I tried. So, in terms of ease of use for a beginner, there's nothing better than the Saturn IV Ultra on the market today. The con in this case really does stand for concern. It's not really a drawback, but more something I want to keep an eye on. The Saturn IV Ultra has a moving part that the non-Ultra doesn't, and that's that moving tray. Now that tray does enable it to move twice as fast. I was able to print this in record time, but it does introduce a moving element. And that moving element does not have any sort of gasket around it. Because of that, when I inevitably do have either a puncture or a spill of some kind, there's a very real risk that resin gets underneath and into the components, and I'm concerned about that. And obviously, combined with a one-year warranty, now I'm very concerned. Now, the price is actually great for this printer. At $399, it's astronomically low but I still don't want to spend $3.99 on my first resin spill. So a gasket that goes around that would be a great addition. I'm imagining that somebody's going to come up with a third party add-on that's going to allow me to do that. But in the meantime, I'm going to have to really watch my P's and Q's to make sure that I don't get anything inside there. That leads me to something that actually is a con. As much as I wanted this thing, God, it's kind of garbage. So for one, it's very flexible and you can see it kind of arrived in not so great condition. It's a little bit uh, bent, there's some cracks in it. It's not wonderful. Um, also, while I appreciate some branding in here, you can see that it does make it very challenging to get it clean. Uh, you've got some lettering here that means I've got to kind of dig in there with uh, a rag to kind of clean it out to make sure that it remains clean. And you can see this part here, and I'll flip it around the back. You can see that this part here it's kind of, I don't know, like, it, like it's been crushed a little bit. Uh, I was hoping for something more solid and something more built specifically for the Saturn IV Ultra. I can use this on my non-Ultra, kind of. Um, so this just, this just didn't come out as high quality as the rest of the printer. And not only that, but you can't buy replacements. So this one's kind of mangled and I don't really have a choice but to keep using it or not use it at all. Uh, the way that the... Uh, the um, plate and the cover is shaped almost requires this so you're going to end up spilling it right into that space that i just mentioned without the gasket so i'm kind of stuck using something that's not really that well built for its task so this is something that as the uh, device uh, matures and we see new versions i'd like to see this improved as well um, we've seen that through the iteration of the saturn 3s the saturn 2s and the saturn 4s We've seen kind of iterations as we go from uh, from device to device, we'll see a slight improvement that's kind of carried forward. So I imagine we're not gonna see it for uh, the next version of maybe uh, a Jupiter LE that's suddenly got moving parts and a, a tray like this. But whatever comes after that probably will have a redesigned element. So eventually they'll get there, but this is kind of a growing pain in the meantime. 
With these figures, I did the same exact things I did with Nova. I threw resin in the vat and I hit print. And you can see that they came out with an incredible amount of detail. However, you can also see that there are some things that are simply unacceptable. They look really cool. Like the crown on this one figure has, uh, the crown pieces look like they're maybe one layer thin. They look phenomenal. The second I pick it up wrong though, it's destroyed. Same thing with these swords. All of them are gone. Every one of these figures here had a sword that they were holding out and they were one layer thin, just trying to get them out of the supports, even with uh, little nippers to try and get them out, destroyed. So I'm gonna have to slow it down and print that with a few more layers to create figures that are actually survivable on the field. Otherwise, I mean, somebody bumps into this and it's game over. That said, uh, these are kind of mix and match. You'll notice that I've got a number of weapons and if you look at the weapons, they're amazing. The detail on the weapons, fantastic. However, you can see that a few of them are so thin, again, they broke. So this is one of those things where I'm gonna have to kind of be mindful of how big the figure is and how delicate the pieces are and I'm gonna have to adjust my print speed accordingly. That said, uh, again, this was done with no setting changes whatsoever and I'm pretty impressed with what came out. Uh, you guys have been asking for me to do uh, smaller figures. There you go, I've done that for you and I'm pretty impressed. Uh, it's just gonna be one of those things that I'm gonna have to adjust a little bit to get the cleanliness that I'm gonna expect to be able to survive a tabletop game. I did mention that the Saturn IV Ultra has a price of $399 and a one-year warranty, and the non-Ultra version also has that same one-year warranty, but it's $299. Now, that extra $100 is taken up mostly by that moving part that allows uh, the speed to double and also obviously increases the reliability of your print, but there's also one other component, and that's the camera that we've shown that does time-lapse photography. There's a very, very small improvement here that I'd like to see for, I guess, the Saturn V Ultra, and that is a small LED light. I look to your competitors like FL Sun, and they have the same sort of time-lapse photography. It's a black and white uh, five frame, uh, or I'm sorry, a picture every five frames to show the building of the object, but they have a small LED light inside the case. And the reason for that is it allows you to turn off the lights in the room and still be able to get that time-lapse photography and still be able to dial in and look at your print while it's being printed. Whereas here with the Saturn IV Ultra, I have to leave a light on in the room. Otherwise, it's just too dark to be able to capture what's going on inside the case. And it makes me wonder if the advanced AI functions of this printer are actually even working if there isn't a light to illuminate them. So perhaps that's something that I'd like to see other people be able to investigate. I just don't know how to I'd even investigate that. You guys are welcome to, to chime in if you'd like Elegoo team. I'd love to hear from you guys, uh, but it's something I'd like to see improved. Maybe it's just a vanity thing to be able to see my prints uh, print in that slow motion, but it's something that looks pretty cool and I'd appreciate it. So all in all, there's simply no beating this printer. The price is phenomenal and the ease of use is phenomenal. Now other people are gonna say, well, I can buy a cheaper printer and I can level it and I can certainly do all those things and it'll be just as good. Well, yeah, that's probably true. You can do that. But it doesn't get any simpler than put the resin in, put a file in, and hit go. The amount of time I've wasted, the amount of busted prints that I've just simply wasted that resin, the price difference between those cheaper printers and this slightly more expensive printer, it seems very worth it to me. So this is your new leader for beginning printing. If you want a printer that you can consistently put out builds like this, look no further. I'm Ron Burke, Editor-in-Chief for GamingTrend.com. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you again very soon.